Building a good concrete road requires a lot of attention to things like the materials, the mixing, the placing, and the jointing. But without good compaction of the concrete, all these other efforts will be wasted. In Australia, poor compaction is the greatest single cause of early failure of concrete roads. Bad compaction costs millions of dollars to repair. Poor compaction of concrete is a worldwide problem in all forms of concrete construction. The good news is that good compaction is not hard to achieve using our existing equipment and resources. It just takes care and attention to detail and it takes an understanding of why good compaction is so important and how to achieve it. So why is compaction so important? When concrete is being mixed, air gets entrapped in it. Air also gets trapped during transporting and placing the concrete. The purpose of compaction is to get rid of this entrapped air, to vibrate it out of the pavement while the concrete is still plastic. This is what compaction is all about. You can see here the trapped air being driven out by the vibrators. If you don't get rid of the air, the strength drop in the concrete is dramatic. Just 2% entrapped air causes more than a 10% drop in strength. That sort of strength drop can halve the life of the pavement from 40 to something like 20 years. That's an enormous cost. So how do we compact concrete? For concrete roads, the usual way is using poker vibrators. These are mounted on the paver in slip form work. In manual construction, the pokers are handheld. Let's look at the slip form paver first. Here, a load of concrete is being discharged by a truck mixer onto the sunbase. Mixing and discharge traps air in the mix. The auger then spreads the concrete across the face, trapping more air in the mix. The strike-off plate levels the concrete off to the right surcharge. At this stage, there is a lot of air trapped in the mix. But behind the strike-off plate are the poker vibrators, electric power in this case. The ends of these pokers are deep in the mix, vibrating and shaking the air out before the concrete goes under the conforming plate of the slip former. These vibrators are the main form of compaction on the paver. To do their job, they must be working properly. Here, a vibrator is being tested for its amplitude and frequency. Next, the spacing must be close enough so that no areas are missed and they must be at the right depth in the concrete. Finally, they must shake the concrete long enough. That means the paver speed cannot be too fast. Right at the start of the project, the trial pavement determines whether the combination of vibrator frequency and amplitude, the spacing and location, and the maximum paver speed will achieve the required compaction when using that particular concrete mix. So how do we check compaction? Well, we take test cores from the pavement and compare them with properly compacted test cylinders. The cores must achieve at least 98% of the cylinder density. If the relative density is too low, 
then the paver speed may need to be slowed down, or more vibrators added and spaced closer, or some other improvement made. 98% compaction is a realistic target, and the design methods used allow for the drop in strength. By the way, look at this core. Look at the tie bar and the void above it. This was caused by the tie bar inserter on the paver pushing the bar down into the pavement, creating a void of entrapped air. So you must recompact concrete around tie bars if inserters are used. When you're paving by hand, rather than by slip former, the same principles of good compaction apply. You need to put in enough vibration energy to compact the concrete well. You do this by making sure the poker vibrators are working well, that they are put in at close enough spacings, and that they are moved through the concrete at a slow enough speed. When there is no reinforcement in the pavement, you can drag the poker through the concrete, but you must do it slowly. Don't go faster than about two metres a minute. And you must do it close enough, say at 350 millimetre centres. And you must do it systematically, so that you don't miss any areas. Dragging vibrators transversely across the pavement is also okay. This can avoid walking in and disturbing concrete that's already been compacted. In CRCP pavements, you can drag longitudinally until you hit the transverse reinforcement and then push the poker back under the bar. In slab anchors and pavements with a lot of reinforcement, you'll have to dip the pokers in vertically at a spacing of about 350 millimetres. Leave the poker in until the air bubbles stop rising. That will take at least 10 seconds and withdraw it slowly. As a guide, you'll need at least one vibrator for every 10 cubic metres you're placing. That means three vibrators at a typical 30 cubic metres per hour. Now, with all this in mind, let's have a close look at this hand paving. There are three vibrators, and that's a good start, but what are they doing? The man at the chute is using his to move the concrete sideways from the heap. That's not compaction, that's spreading. And this fellow is also using his to spread, not compact the concrete. Only this vibrator is actually in a position to compact, but it's not moving slowly enough. And there is no systematic pattern for the compaction across the whole pavement. Not good enough, is it? It's very important to realise that compaction occurs in two stages. In stage one, the vibrators liquefy the concrete, causing it to slump vertically. In stage two, they start to drive out the entrapped air. Liquefaction takes at least three seconds, and air expulsion at least another seven. Hand paving not only requires good poker vibration, but also good surface vibration, using vibrating screeds. This is to get a dense, durable, well-compacted surface that will retain its skid resistance right where the rubber hits the road. Vibrating screeds must be adjusted to the right camber so that the finished pavement is level. They must be maintained to deliver the correct compaction energy. They must be the double beam, or the truss type, moving at no more than two metres a minute. They must be operated with a continuous roll of concrete at the leading edge. It's no good compacting daylight under the screen. You'll need two passes of the screen. The first will achieve a lot of surface compaction, but not sufficient to finish. Sometimes, for example, you will be topping up a low spot. The second pass will produce a closer tolerance because the roll of concrete at the leading edge will be uniform and that produces a uniform finish and a good ride. 
In summary, for hand paving, the first step is to spread the concrete. Have a good man on the chute so that the spread is uniform to minimise shoveling. Use the shovels where you have to, but remember, while ever the concrete is moving laterally, you're only spreading, not compacting. The second step, poker vibration, is when compaction starts. Poker vibration must be systematic, slow and at the right spacing. Poker runs must be no more than 350 millimetres apart. Make each run about two metres long and don't drag the poker faster than two metres a minute. Have about three lineal metres spread before you start each two metre poker run and don't vibrate closer than about a metre from the spreading front. Vibration too close to the front will only spread, not compact the concrete. Note where you ended each run so you know where to start the next two metre run. Take the pokers out if you're held up for concrete. The next step is surface vibration and you'll need two passes of the vibrating screed. The first pass gets the levelling nearly right. Move forward no faster than two metres a minute. Use shovels to keep a fairly uniform roll of concrete, say 20 millimetres high, right across the front of the screed. And stop the screed about a metre short of where you stop the pokers. This first pass can't help but be a stop-start operation of the screed. It's the second pass that gives the final surface compaction and finish. You get this with a slow, uninterrupted run of the second vibrating screed. Because every time you stop a screed, a ridge will form in the fresh concrete and you'll need to float it. And that reduces the quality of the surface smoothness. So when hand paving, the first pass of the screed is like a pre-spreader in a machine paving operation. And the second pass is like the slip form paver, giving the final compaction and finish to close tolerances. Remember too that to get full compaction and accuracy your formwork must be grout tight and accurate with no lips of joints and no gaps under the forms where concrete will leak out rather than get compacted. So the same principles of good compaction apply for both hand paving and slip forming. In hand paving to get the full concrete strength and long pavement life, your compaction must be systematic, at a close enough spacing, for a long enough time, and with a slow withdrawal speed. And remember that spreading isn't compaction, and to avoid disturbing any already compacted concrete. When slip forming, the paver speed must be slow enough, and with all the vibrators working properly, and at the correct spacing. So next time you're building a concrete road pavement, don't forget the vital role of good compaction. Keep remembering why it's important and how to achieve it. Act as if what you do makes a difference, because it does. Without good compaction, you're building a second-class road, even if using first-class materials and equipment.